ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary nobles, welcome to the first annual QWERTY Book Award! Please welcome to the stage your host for the evening, QWERTY! too kind. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight, today, this historical event that only happens once a year and maybe never again because it was so much effort to make. So welcome everyone to the very first annual QWERTY Book Awards. Yes, this is the event in which we celebrate acknowledge and give out random awards to the books that I personally read in 2020. This is not a Goodreads Choice Award. This night, no, is my personal preferences only. No one has contributed in the rankings, in the winners, in these awards except myself. Thank you. Your opinions mean nothing, because this night is about my opinions. However, if you do feel so inclined as to select your own personal winners for each of the many categories tonight, feel free to comment below or on the various other social medias out there like Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. Yes. Thank you. So tonight I have brought together the wide world of author and booktubers here to present these awards because there are simply far too many for me to do myself. And I'm a lazy fuck. So along with myself, several other YouTubers are here to pronounce my personal picks for each of the 29 categories. So buckle up cuties and let's begin the awards. The first one which I'm going to give. So I've decided to start this night on a low note and let's talk about the absolute worst book of 2020. The book that I wish I could take out of my brain for having read it. The nominees are Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear, Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion, Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marvin James, Zero Bomb by M.T. Hill, and Voices by David Elliott. All of these books worked very hard to displease me this year, doing things such as overusing sexually gorific content, or just being really badly written, and hating on women, or animal abuse, all things that I absolutely cannot stand in books. And the one that did it the most, that was the most horrific, time-wasting novel of my 2020, may be controversial considering so many people love it. However, the winner of the worst book of 2020 for me is... Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. Oh, how I hated this book so much. This book had so much gore that I literally gagged while reading it. It had so much unnecessary sex that I wanted to claw out my ears because I listened to it as an audiobook. It was just terrible in my personal opinion and I hated every moment of listening to the 24 hour audiobook. Thank you for wasting my time. And now the next category will be brought to you by Halo Moon Studios, AKA Hala. Hey cuties. Am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to say, I've been wanting to say that. I don't know, it's catchy and it works because it's Cordy's page. Today, um, I have the honor of presenting the nominees for two categories in Cordy's 2020 book review nomination award thing. She probably made a title. I don't know what it is, but I'm here to tell you who the nominees are. Our first category today is going to be the Comeback Kid, aka You Didn't Suffer Sequel Syndrome. I thought this, like, channeling the 90s was appropriate. I guess Comeback Kid made me think of Karate Kid. 
some 90s. <laughs> We're going with the 90s. Going with it. So the first nominee for this category is Blood and Honey by Shelby somebody. Mahurin. Mahurin? I'm not sure how this is pronounced. The second nominee is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. Again, names I don't know how to pronounce. This is going so well. I'm making such a great impression, everybody. The third nomination is going to be Between Burning Worlds by Jessica Brody and Joanne Randell. I got that one right. I got that one right. I have the list on my computer here and I'm working with you guys here. So learning. I'm trying to memorize them, but also I can't pronounce the names. Moving on. The fourth nominee for this category is The Night Country by Melissa Albert. I actually, I've heard so many good things about this book series. I'm really curious to get into it. So maybe that will pop up in my book reads this year. We'll see. And then the last nominee for this category is Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. Uh, this is another series that just keeps popping at my attention. I think it's because the cover's illustrated. So I'm just like, ooh, but you. So those are the five nominees for the category, The Comeback Kid. And the winner of this category is Blood and Honey by Shelby Maharin. Sorry again if I mispronounced your name, but I'm learning. This is the category winner for the comeback hit, AKA You Didn't Suffer Sequel Syndrome. Thank you, Hot Love. That was lovely. And now we go over to Cat Leo writing. Hello, my name is Cat Leo, and I have the honor with Anna of presenting the next award. The category is your life experiences are not universal, but God, I wish they were. Best Contemporary 2020. And apparently Anna has very strong opinions about this. The nominees. Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Karam. Sorry if I said the name wrong. I, I don't know. I'm doing my best. Loveless by Alice Oseman. What do you mean? It's a... Tweet Cube by Emma Lord. The Gravity of Us by Phil Stomper. Then you read the cards. The winner is Loveless by Alice Oseman. Congratulations to Loveless. Thank you, Kat and Anna. She's lovely. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about some more disappointing news. This category is titled, I believed in you. We all believed in you. The most disappointing book in 2020. The nominees are Star Daughter by Shveta Thakrar, Wind Witch by Susan Dennard, The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders, Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepherd, and The Betrothed by Kiera Cass and the award for the most disappointing book of 2020 goes to The Betrothed by Tierra Cass. Thank you for ruining everything for me. Wow, you were doing so well. You made me feel like I was back in a true Kiara Cass novel. And then you ripped out the rug from under me with that ending. Wow. Thanks for nothing. But seriously though, I will be reading the sequel of this because are you kidding me? No way is that how that story ends. And now for more uplifting categories, we move to Fee. And now for the category, if anything happened to this book, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. The most underrated book of 2020. Nominees are Zeros by Scott Westerfield, Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones, and The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Curry. And the winner is... The Bone 
How to Just by Emily Lloyd Jones. Thank you very much, V. Our next category is presented by none other than Spence. In the category of chocolate pros, the best pros of 2020. The nominees are The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stifader, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab, City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, and Strange the Dreamer by Lilani Taylor. Strange the Dreamer by Lilani Taylor. Thank you very much, Spence. And we move across oceans for our next presenter. I give you Professor What Now. Yeah, no, no. No, I'm waiting now. Nope, not even nominated. Just gotta trundle out there and do this fucking bullshit because it's some sort of community spirit. I don't know. I had to lord over somebody else's achievements while mine go completely ignored. I'm getting a little bit sick of this. I've got to. Look, I'll call you back, okay? But call me. Okay, bye, bye. <laughs> Good evening, my assorted doom cherubs. It's me, what now? Orphitude's last resort, and if the general undertone is to be understood, your weird crush. You know, the conventional wisdom has it that winning is not important. Simply being nominated is enough of an honour. So it stands to reason, then, that the greater honour still is not being nominated yourself, but being selected to introduce the awards for someone else. So you can believe me when I say that I am deeply, deeply honoured to be here tonight. You know, it is very chic at the moment for minimalism, for writers to try and do the most with the least, and that a paired back sentence is the best sentence. You know, joyless people, thin-skinned, thin-blooded, and emotionally, spiritually, and morally void. And so we take this moment in the evening to bring you the inaugural Violet Your Turning Violet Violet, the Purple Prose Appreciation Award, just to take a little time and fly the flag and recognise the achievements of those writers, and one writer in particular, who knows all too well that when it comes to long-form prose fiction, you can never have too much of a good thing. So, the nominees for Your Turning Violet Violet, the Purple Pros Appreciation Award, which is something I will just keep saying because it's incredibly fun to do so, are Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore, Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore, no relation, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater, and An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. And the winner of the very first Violet Returning Violet Violet for the Purple Prose Appreciation Award is, absolutely no surprise to me because I've got it written down on this card, it's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Son of a bitch. Yes, I'm sure Ms Morgenstern will be very, very happy with the recognition Oh, not as happy as some other hard-working, purplish, prosious writers I could mention if I cared to, but I don't. I'm really putting the dick in Dicky Bow, aren't I? See you later. Thank you, Professor What Now. That was something. And now I'd like to turn the camera over to the one, the only, B.C. Brown Books. You're just gonna leave it like that? Best Cliffhangers of 2020. And the nominees are Starsight by Brandon Sanderson, A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tommy Adeyami, Between Burning Worlds by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rindle, The Silvered Serpents by Roshani Chakshi. And the winner for Best Cliffhangers of 2020 is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tommy Adeyami. 
Thank you very much, BC. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary nobles, we're back to me now. I apologize. When we have far more entertaining presenters than myself. But let's not look at me. Let's look at the books that I could stare at for five hours or longer, really. These are the best covers of 2020. The nominees are Unravel the Dusk by Elizabeth Lim. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. The Silvered Serpents by Roshni Chakshi. All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. And The Kingdom of Bach by Marie Lu. As you can see, all of those covers were absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. And this was a very difficult category to choose from. But you have to think of all the things that make a cover the best cover. Does it have some amazing color work? Does it have embossing on the cover? What part is embossed on the cover? Does it wrap around and hold more secrets in it than you realize upon first glancing? Well, based on that rubric, the one and only winner of the best cover of 2020 goes to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Just Look at that dragon. It's embossed, it wraps, it's gorgeous art, just everything about this cover. I love and would put it up on my wall. I would make a mural of this cover if I had any artistic talent, which I do not. And now over to Bex, the novel Nana herself. First, let me just say, I am thrilled to be a presenter. I'm sorry, what? What do you mean I wasn't asked? I wasn't the first choice? <sighs> really? I'm just a fill-in? Okay, let's just get on with the show. Sorry about that. I was asked to present two awards tonight, and I'm happy to do so. So as you can see, the first award right here, is for Best Historical Fiction for 2020. So, let's see. The nominees, please. I don't care what the history books say. This is canon now. Best Historical Fiction of 2020. And the nominees are... So excited. The King of Crows by Libba Bray, The Gilded Bulls by Roshani Chokshi, My Calamity Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, The Kingdom Back by Marie Lu, I Darken by Kirsten White. Those are your nominees. And let's see who the winner is. I have our little gold envelope. For best historical fiction of 2020, without further ado. Oh, so exciting. My Calamity Jane. My Calamity Jane is the winner. Uh, My Calamity Jane is by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Congratulations. Wow. Did you just see the amazing work she put into that? So much more effort than myself. And now we move over to OK Weird. Yes, yes. Ugh. We've had all of these before. She's not going to. And then the giant's children were very sad because they didn't have a daddy anymore. The end. Is it asleep? We're going to walk out very quietly. This is my chance. I've been stuck here for so many fucking years. I can't fucking do this anymore. Oh, by the way, this is the best retelling. Cool. This little fucking demon keeping me hair away from my magic and shit. The nominees are 
The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Mayer Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell Reflection by Elizabeth Lim Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim And the winner is only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Thank you so much, OK Weird. That was spectacular. Now, let's move over to the darkness and visit the witchy depths of Sakotumi. J.K. Rowling is turf. These are better. Best witchy books of 2020. The nominees are... <clears throat> A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. The Witchland Series by Susan Dennard. The Babysitter's Coven by Kate Williams. And Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. The winner is... A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Thank you, Sako. I am extremely jealous of your crown. I should have put a crown on. And now for the next category. This one titled, Okay, Okay, I Get It, I'll Read the Damn Book. This is the best recommendation of 2020. The nominees are The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. Circe by Madeline Miller. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. And The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And the winner is... The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. Yes, this was recommended to me by Leora, who swore up and down the magnificence of these books, specifically the audiobooks, which I do have to say, not a huge fan of the narrator. The whistling S thing got to me. However, the prose of Maggie Stiefvater is really what made this guy win. This guy, these books. Hello, this is my show. And now we move on to the ace in space, Dal Cecil Runo. Hello there humans, I am Dal Cecil Runo. I'm very happy to be invited to this amazing QWERTY's Bookish Awards 2020. Thank you. Of course, I am here to present the... Uh, okay, uh, here we go. Pew 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 pew! Or what was it? How many times was it pew? Uh, whatever. Pew 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 pew! Best sci-fi book of 2020. Seriously, why do we have to perpetuate this trope? Anyway, <coughs> I'm still getting used to Earth atmosphere. <coughs> anyway, um, yeah, the alien is here. Sorry. So the nominees are. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green Binti by Neddy Okorafor Spell Hacker by M.K. England Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and Between Burning Worlds by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell Are you ready for the winner? Are you? Really? Sure? And the winner is... Pew! 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 Is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Thank you. Uh, am, I, am I done? Yeah. Thank you. Bye. No, wait, no. See you later. Thank you, doll. That was amazing. And now we're gonna go right on back to Hala of Halo Moon Studios. Alright, I'm gonna pull things back a little bit for this next category, because it's not about me. It's not about me as a person. It's about all the non-people out there. So rather than this category being about books, it's going to be about characters, specifically those that are better than people. And let's be honest, animals are so much better than people, but it's not just animals. So this category is officially titled Better Than People, Best Non-Human Sidekicks. This one, I'm very excited about because, like I said, loving animals, 
loving all the non people things if you can just kind of see what's going on back there there's a lot of character non-human character representation <laughs> So there are also five nominees for this category. The first nominee for this category is Banana the Raven from the witchy graphic novel. The next nominee in our category is Chainsaw the Raven from the Raven Cycle series. So we already got two ravens in our nominees. I'm seeing a trend and then I'm going to smash that trend. So the next one is David the Corgi from red, white, and royal blue. So, corgis, now we got a dog. I like corgis. We have two birds and a dog. I like where this is going. The next nominee in the category is Mbot and Doom Slug from the Skyward. I guess it's, uh, it's going to be, I don't know if it's gonna be a trilogy in the end, um, but the first book in the series is Skyward by Brandon Anderson. Uh, this is actually the only book on the list that I've personally read, uh, so I can, vouch that they are quite interesting characters. The last nominee for this category is The Thunderhead from the Ark of the Scythe series. The Thunderhead, I had to look this up. It's not like a physical character, I don't think. It's an AI, so it's still non-human and it's a pretty darn good sidekick from what I could tell. And the winner for the best non-human sidekick because they're better than people is... Which book is it, buddy? Which book is it? Oh, is that the book? Is that the book? No, you slimed on it. Yes, so Mbot and Doomslug from the Skyward book are the winners of this category. Mbot has quite a personality and Doomslug Slug is just like weirdly cute. <laughs> I've seen some like little, like I chose these little pictures for it because I was like, hey, that's super cute and I haven't really found any other renditions. I hope you enjoyed this little clip de clip thing here. We're gonna switch over to the next nominees and if I'm the last one, then we're not gonna do that. So, did you guys think different characters and different books deserve to be the winners? Comment below and let's talk about it. That's all for me, on to the rest of the video. Hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you later. Bye. I don't want to continue the video because I just want to watch a Treyu. Can we just change this to a watching a Treyu video? No? Okay. Well, in that case, we'll move over to somebody else that I love and adore, and that is none other than Fee! Now for the category, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, the worst, most heart-wrenching deaths of a character in 2020. The nominees for this category are Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi, Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin, the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, and Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. And the winner is... <sighs> Drumroll, please. We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. Thank you, Fee. Wonderful as always. And now, back to me. I'm so sorry. Let's not think about using our eyes. Let's think about using our ears. And let's talk about the nominees for those who could read the dictionary in Pig Latin and I'd still listen to them. The best narrator of 2020. The nominees are Steve West, Rebecca Soler, January Lavoy, Catherine Kilgren, and Emily Ellett. And the winner is this was very difficult, actually. But I have to give it to Rebecca Solaire, who reads the entirety of the Lunar Chronicles, along with many other books that I read this year as an audiobook. And boy, does she do an excellent job. And now, back over to Spence. In the category of, well, that escalated quickly, the most dramatic character of 2020. The nominees are Legend from Caraval by Stephanie Gauber, Achilles from The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, Spensa from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, Al Alex Clement Diaz from Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston, and Lou from Blood and Honey by 
Shelby Maharan. And the winner is Spensa from Skyward Sword by Brandon Zanderson. Thank you very much, Spence. And now we go back over to BC Brown Books. More feminism, less bullshit. Best female protagonist of 2020. And the nominees are Nari from the Devabad Trilogy by S.K. Chakraborty. Spensa from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Lou from Blood and Honey by Shelby Maharan. Rin from The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. Addie LaRue from The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. And the winner for Best Female Protagonist of 2020, Nari, from the Devabad Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. Thank you very much, BC. And now we'll move back over to Professor What Now. So you are unblocking the sink. Yes. You took the pipe out. And there was an air bubble. And all the grease and dishwater went all over you. Yeah, now, listen, uh, when I said talk dirty to me, what I was actually getting at was... Oh, hang on a second. No, no, don't hang up. This won't take long. Uh, hi. Yes, me again. We really should stop meeting like this. You know, it's often said that... A fiction writer becomes an artist when they can create the sensation of a waking dream in their reader. But we all know that's not quite true, because the mark of a true artist is one who can create the nightmare. An author introducing their work to somebody is like going to someone's house for the first time. How do you make a first impression? Do you engage them in witty conversation? Do you give them food for thought, long, caring, cherishing, understanding communications between people? No, 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 no. Because as we all know, the very, very best way to make a lasting impression is to scar them. <laughs> It is in that vein that the thanks for the nightmares, excellence in shocking and scarring scenes award was created, and tonight's nominees are prime examples of this phenomenon. Or they might be. I haven't read them. So the nominees for the Thanks for the Nightmares Excellence in Visually Shocking and Scarring Scenes Award, which isn't as fun to say as the other one, but still here we are, are Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, I looked it up, it's not a sequel, Zero Bomb by M.T. Hill, why is the hill empty? Because a bomb went off, Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey, you may know it better under its former title of Yuri Geller, the official biography. And The Night Country by Melissa Albert. And the winner is Ninth House by Lee Bardago. Congratulations. Lee couldn't be here with us tonight for reasons that should be perfectly obvious to anyone who is paying attention to the reality around them. But the Thanks for the Nightmares Excellence in Scarring and Shocking Scenes Award will soon be delivered to him. What did you say, punk? Late at night, when he's home alone, in the shower, and it'll be brought to him by the revivified, mostly decomposed body of his grandmother. Granny's so proud of you, give me a great big kiss. <laughs> Got a little bit caught up in that. Don't mind me. Good evening. Interesting as always, Professor What Now. Thank you. And let's tarry back over to Bex, the novel Nana. The next category that I am presenting is... Don't mind that. Are you freaking kidding me? Weirdest, most shocking plot twist of 2020. And the nominees are... A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee. The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. The City in the Middle of Night by Charlie Jane Andrews. Blood of Wonderland by Colleen Oakes. The Betrothed by Kira Cass. 
and the winner of the weirdest and most shocking plot twist of 2020 is Don Don Don. The Betrothed by Kiara Cass. Congratulations on your win. I will hold your awards for you and uh, you can get them after this quarantine mess is over. Okay, Cordy, back to you. For this next category, it was impossible to have anyone else do this because let's face it, you probably haven't heard of this before. These are the best indie books of 2020. The nominees are Canathrope by Vanessa Robertson, All's Well in Asgard by E.J. Lowell, Reactants by Daisha M. Arnold, The Hands Were Given by O.E. Tierman, and Rum and Redemption by Dahlia De Winters. And the winner for the best indie book of 2020 is The Hands Were Given by O.E. Tierman. I don't think that's much of a shock considering how much I do talk about this book and cannot wait to read the next. So well done, O.E. Tierman, the collaborative group that writes this. This isn't one single person. And I believe they even have a fifth book coming out now, so boy do I need to catch up. And now bringing with us the opposite of an indie book, the classics, with Sako Toomey. You've aged like fine cheese, the best classic of 2020. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. And the winner is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Thank you, Sako. Let's move back to that ace from space, Dal Cesaruno. Oh, I'm here again. Hang on a minute. I don't feel so adequate for this category because I am not an anti-hero. So maybe, but I am an anti-hero. Oh, no. Yes. Maybe I should present this. All right, if you want to. Then, okay, here is my alter ego. Her name is Hulda. Shh. We don't have much time for introductions, my dear. So here is the category of... What is this? Sorry. Blindness. Okay. Not as big a jerk as you could have been. Best anti-hero of 2020. And the nominees are... And sorry if I pronounce these things incorrectly. Sometimes these names are made up, so... Sorry. The nominees are... Severine from The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Shokshi. Miriam from Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Jazz from Artemis by Andy Weir. April May from An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. And Scum from Zeros by Scott Westerfeld. You pronounce that correctly, right? Westerfeld, anyway. And the winner is... Who is a not so bad a jerk? I don't know, maybe it's me. No, it's not me. Who could it be? Hilda, come on, we don't have time. Shut up. The winner is Jazz from Artemis by Andy Weir. I like that name, Jazz. It's very musical. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Hilda, thank you. Um, so yeah, we have the anti-hero category, so we have the winner. Yay. It's time for us to move on to the next category before I get shot right here. See you. Maybe next year, if I'm still alive by then. Bye! Well, thank you very much, Holder. That was a lovely interlude. And now I present to you those who I would have their adopted babies for the best queer representation of 2020. The nominees are Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. And The Hands Were Given by O.E. Tierman. And the winner was very difficult because I love all of these queer characters so very much. The representation in these books is just fantastic. So if you're looking for really good LGBTQIA 
representation. These are some great wrecks. But the winner, there can only be one, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Yes, we even have the journey of somebody's bisexual discovery, and I think that was really beautifully done. And of course, who doesn't want a gay prince? And now, back over to OK Weird. Well, shit. I have to move a snail table today. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I definitely, I, I, I have some friends that I can, um, call and, um, rely on to, um, assist in such an endeavor. So I feel like if we just have a positive attitude, a positive, positive attitude, and some teamwork, then we can fit. What, what, what are you complaining about? Pick up your side. No, uh, you gonna pick up your side? Here. Oh, so you're gonna take on a supervisory role. Okay. Okay, I see how it is. All right. All right. That was a bust. So anyway, here's the best friendship of 2020. The nominees are... Sophia and Isolt from The Witchlands by Susan Dennard. Spensa and Kimmel Lynn from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Alex and Nora from Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Lou and Coco from Blood and Honey by Shelby Maharan. Cinder and Thorn from The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Mayer. And the winner is... Sophia and Isolt from The Witchlands by Susan Dennard. Thank you, OK Weird. Thank you. So many puppies appearing on this award show tonight. What do we need me for? Let's just show puppies. And the final presenter of the evening, once again, Cat Leo Writing. It's me, Cat Leo, yet again. But this time with Cinder, because Anna's a jerk. The category is, I feel personally attacked. Most relatable character. I feel personally attacked by Anna. And Cinder agrees. The nominees are Georgia from Loveless by Alice Oseman, Spencer from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, Diz from Spellhacker by M.K. England, Cersei from Cersei by Madeline Miller, Nanerl from The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lou. See, Cinder doesn't. I think, thank you for not getting angry with me if I pronounce anything wrong. Yes, we should get on to the winner. The winner is Georgia from Loveless by Alice Oseman. Congratulations. That's actually two awards for you. Cool. Great job. That wasn't sarcastic. It was honest. Thank you! Thank you, Kat, and thank you, everyone, for participating in this video. However, I will close out the night with our final two categories. And the next category is, what do you mean it's over? You can't run out of plot. The best series of 2020. And the nominees are Ark of a Scythe by Neil Schusterman, The Lady Janies by The Lady Janies, Jody Meadows, Brody Ashton, and Cynthia Hand. The Devabod Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. And Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Again, a very difficult decision was made. However, this series should keep going, and if it doesn't, I will cry a lot. And the winner is... The Devabod Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. Boy, did I love this, and boy, am I mad it's over. All right, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary nobles, we are at the final category of the night. And that, of course, is put the entirety of this book on my tombstone, the best book 
of 2020 that I personally read. Remember, all of these awards are my personal opinions with no outside input whatsoever. Deal with it. The nominees are Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, My Lady Jane by the Lady Janies, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, Loveless by Alice Oseman, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, and Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. The winner of my best book of 2020 must be a book that I would reread over and over and over again. And with all those books, I most certainly would. And for many of them, I have. But there is only one that I keep going back to just to read all of my favorite parts so much that I've actually tabbed this book. I never tab books, but this one made me tab it. And that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Yay! You did it! Well done! And thank you to all of you who contributed to this video and to all of you out there who are watching this. If you watch this to the end, well done, because I'm certain this is very, very long. Again, if you have other recommendations that you think should have won these awards in 2020 that you've read, put them down in the comments below or on Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter, or just shout them really, really loud so that I can hear them. That'll do. Thank you again, everyone. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary nobles, good night, even afternoon. Really, Trash Crook? Really? We're filming an award show in here. I sneeze, no. Don't sneeze with lipstick gone. Oh no. There's an eyelash in my eye. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Really? Blare your music, fix it 24 seven heating, air, electric, plumbing. Get parked, get out and turn off your car. Oh my God, I hate our neighbors. I mean, I'm sure they hate me too, but you know, whatever. <laughs>